Hello and welcome to the News on NT International. At this time, I am Habiba Oladipo. We begin with a look at the headlines. Issues relating to challenges of security in the Northwest in focus as President Mohamed Buhari grants audience to Kassina State Governor. Nigerian Immigration Service to be technology driven for good service delivery. And global death toll from COVID 19 infections exceeds 700,000. Issues relating to the challenges of security in the Northwest sub-region, as well as ongoing efforts at containing the situation for sustainable peace, growth and development, dominated discussions as President Muhammad Buhari granted audience to Governor Aminu Bello Masari of Kassina State. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. So far, the situation is under control in Kassina, and I believe in most part of Northwest. But it is not over until it is over. Ways and means of getting the situation permanently under control informed this interactive engagement between Governor Aminu Bello Masari and President Muhammad Buhari. During the meeting, which lasted about 45 minutes, the ongoing military operations in the area were discussed and suggestions given on the best way forward. The hope is that the military including the police and other security agencies, have been given a marching order to control the situation by all means. Uh, with the current operation going on, I'm sure before the end of this uh, rainy season, uh, people can go back to normal life. It's a task that must be done. The government, Governor Masari said, cannot allow a situation similar to that of the Northeast develop in the northwest sub-region. The people living in the rural communities will testify that yes, no situation is impossible, especially to a willing and determined mind. So I do believe that we can conquer these bandits, get the land back in total peace. Then state governments and local governments will now move in especially in the area of education, then access, then water supply, then there are means of livelihood, which mainly agriculture and livestock. Governor Masari used the opportunity to felicitate with the president on behalf of the people of Kassina State on the peaceful celebration of the greater Eid amidst the coronavirus pandemic. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has received the sixth interim report on the current phase of the coronavirus lockdown, expressing satisfaction with the high sense of professionalism, commitment and patriotism exhibited by members of the PTF and other frontline workers in the tax of containing the pandemic. PTF Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who presented the report, said despite the significant number of patients recently discharged and dropping cases of infections, Nigeria is yet to be out of the woods. The Federal Executive Council in July approved the National Policy on Solid Waste Management and National Forest Policy to achieve effective waste disposal and sustainable management of forest resources. To enhance implementation, monitoring and enforcement of the policies, the federal government is interfacing with states to bind to the policies and have them domesticated. On NGA Fine Face reports. The collaboration of states is a move by the federal government intended to address peculiar regional environmental challenges and bridge existing gaps between national and subnational governments in terms of project implementation and feedback mechanisms. Environmental challenges like oil pollution, coastal and urban erosion, degradation of mangroves ecosystem and loss of biodiversity are some issues unique to the South-South region 
and formed the key thrust of the meeting between the Commissioners of Environment in the region and the Minister of State Environment. Uh, the concept of state government is that a creator of uh, the Mm -hmm. uh, we are putting them together to form cooperative societies and these cooperative societies will now uh, put their funds together and have a stake. Now current efforts to mitigate environmental concerns in the south-south like the planned National Mangroves Restoration Project and identification and upgrade of sites to the status of marine protected areas as well as synergy in the implementation of the Ogoni cleanup exercise we are considered in the meeting. Because in ending coal fire, we'll have to find alternative means of livelihood for our young men of the Niger Delta. And the modular refinery is the way to go. But before then as well, we'll have to talk about the remediation and how to stop the oil spillage. Because in them doing the coal fire, they actually damage, they damage the pipelines States in the region are expected to increase sensitization and awareness campaigns to address flood and erosion in line with resolutions made in the meeting. In Abuja, Onengye Fine Face, NTA News. And to speak more on the issues, the founder of Health of Mother Earth Foundation, Dr. Nimo Basi. Glad to have you join us in our studios at this time. Thank you so much. So you've heard from that report that the federal government is initiating a mangrove restoration project in Nigeria. How can this project benefit the Niger Delta region and the nation at large? Um, well, the, the project, when implemented, would have very direct impact and benefits for the Niger Delta and the nation and indeed Africa. Because the mangrove system of the Niger Delta is one of the largest on the continent. And this is the place where most fisheries in the Gulf of Guinea breed. And so it covers the entire West Coast all the way down to Angola and beyond. Uh, so it would um, be extremely beneficial. And it will also help to stop, possibly, hopefully, stop the great damage that's been done to the mangrove system by, from oil spills, uh, for dumping of all kinds of waste, including plastics. Uh, I think it will help us to change our mentality, the way we relate to marine ecosystems and the mangrove ecosystem themselves. So establishing marine protected areas is part of the restoration project. Can you speak to the import of this on the people and the ecosystem? Um, having marine protected areas in Nigeria is something that has been long overdue because, I mean, we have such a, a long coastline, we have one of the longest stretches of the Niger passing through any country, and yet we've not protected any part of it. It has led to indiscriminate, indiscriminate harvesting of aquatic, aquatic resources, and it's allowed corporations to pollute our environment. Uh, Using the rivers and the all the rivers as waste dumps has been quite not suitable at all. So having protected areas will help to preserve biodiversity, will increase access to fisheries, it will increase the economic potentials of coastal communities, it, it will actually generate jobs for the people and also fit into the traditional norms of protection that people already have in their communities. And finally, rather than work in isolation, the Minister of State Environment is building collaborations with the Commissioners of Environment in states of the country. What are the likely outcomes of such national and subnational synergy? Um, well, as I see the, the meeting with the Commissioners of various states as extremely important, very positive. Uh, because it's, it's very easy to, you can, you could sit in Abuja and designate places, marine protected areas or places for mangrove restoration, whereas there may, there may be no mangroves, no mangroves in those places because you may not really know what is happening on the ground. So engaging with the stakeholders and now the commissioners of environment in various states actually brings, has the possibility of bringing the real areas that require to be protected and things that need to be done on the ground so they will get the actual play, map the, uh, the correct places, and also engage with the grassroots. So I expect the Commissioners for Environment to go further down to speak with those in the local government and those in the communities. So it doesn't just stop at that policy level. 
it has to get down to the grassroots and that will really help make it viable. Many thanks Dr. Mimo Basi, founder of Health of Mother Earth Foundation for sharing your time and your thoughts with us on the news. And to global update, 24,000 health workers in South Africa have contracted COVID-19 and 181 have so far died. Joyce Omitu has that report on global death toll from the virus and reports that over 700,000 have died. <laughs> The world is seeing a rapid rise in the number of COVID-19 fatalities. Since the 20th of July 2020, the death toll has increased by more than 100,000. Currently, the total number of persons who have died from COVID-19 globally has exceeded 700,000. More than 160,000 in the U.S., with Brazil accounting for nearly 100,000 and Mexico third highest with 48,000. As at 6 p.m., statistics by Worldometer reveal that there are now 18,818,243 cases, out of which 12,004,498 have recovered. In Nigeria, 44,433 cases have been confirmed. 31,851 cases discharged and 910 persons have died. Continent-wide, Africa has 986,212 cases, 21,193 deaths and 659,280 recovered patients. In South Africa, some 24,000 health workers have contracted coronavirus, 181 of the number have died. South Africa is the hardest hit country on the continent, accounting for more than half the cases. In Asia, test results for a man suspected of being North Korea's first coronavirus case has returned inconclusive. But a World Health Organization official reports that authorities have quarantined more than 3,000 primary and secondary contacts. In the meantime, clinical trials on humans have begun in China for a potential coronavirus vaccine developed by German pharmaceutical group BioNTech with Chinese company Fosun Pharma. The companies in a statement said 72 participants have already received their first dose following approval for the phase one trial from Chinese regulatory authorities. And that's a global update on COVID-19. Thanks for watching. I am Joyce Ometu. Lebanese rescue teams are pulling out bodies and hunting for missing ones in the wreckage of a building. At the t as at time of this report, investigation blamed negligence for a massive warehouse explosion that sent a devastating blast wave across Beirut, killing at least 135 people, while more than 5,000 others were injured. The explosion was the most powerful ever to rip through Beirut, a city still scarred by civil war that ended three decades ago and reeling from an economic meltdown and a surge in coronavirus infections. A blast rattled building, the blast rattled buildings on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, about 100 miles away. President Michel Aouno said 2,750 tons of nirate, nirate used in fertilizers and bombs had been stored for six years at the port without safety measures after it was seized. In an address to the nation, during an emergency cabinet session, he said, and I quote, No words can describe the horror that has hit Beirut last night turning it into a disaster-stricken city, end of quote. He said that the government is determined to investigate and bring those responsible as soon as possible on account of negligence. You're watching the news on NTA International. It's time to take a break. We'll be back with more reports shortly. Many thanks for being there. The downstream subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, the petroleum product marketing company, PPMC, has announced a new ex depot price of PMS, also known as Petro, at 138.62 Naira per litre. The price, which takes effect from the 5th of August, is in line with the new market fundamentals following the deregulation of petroleum. The ex depot price is the price at which depot owners sell the commodity to retail outlets. The ex depot price per litre of petrol is normally around 
15 naira lower than the pulp price as the marketers would add the cost of transportation from the depots to their retail outlets as well as other costs and marketers margin amongst others. A statement signed by Mohamed Bello, manager sales of the PPMM, PPMC disclosed that the new price would take effect from the 5th of August 2020. All public and private schools exit classes in River States have resumed for preparations for their final examination. This comes a day after Unity Schools in Nigeria resumed. The Barbary Nwaiki reports. The first day of resumption had students cleaning and making the environment conducive in preparation for academic activities. Although the number of students present was not appreciable, adequate arrangements have been put in place to accommodate all students participating in the examination. Officials from the Ministry of uh, Environment, Ministry of uh, Education and other agencies came here to fumigate the environment. We are ready. During this period of lockdown, we are preparing ourselves for the exam. Earlier on Tuesday, 4th August, Unity Schools in River State reopened in compliance with federal government's reopening directive. This time, we will do a lot of revision. We have put in place afternoon prep. Schools are expected to adhere strictly to all guidelines and conditions stipulated to fight against COVID-19 by the PTF on COVID-19, WHO and NCDC. In Port Harcourt, Diba Barry, Sid Mawiki, NTA News. The Nigerian Immigration Service has made a commitment to become more and more technology-driven and a service to the nation. Comptroller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandede, gave the indication while addressing senior officers in commemoration of the service's 57th anniversary in Abuja, Victor Azu reports. The Nigeria Immigration Service has made conscious efforts to digitize its operations. Migrant e-registration, passport application data processing system, and the migration information and data analysis system, and the list is endless. But as it appeared, coronavirus reared its devastating head and disrupted provision of physical services. Regardless, the high point of these efforts is the technology building envisaged to be completed later this year. The project is expected to accommodate the ICT database of the Nigeria Immigration Service with huge implications for Nigeria's internal security. Little wonder that at the commemoration of the service's 57th anniversary, the Comptroller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandede, considers the future of the service to be digital. Our vision is to put all our data, all our intelligence, in one place, analyze and share with other law enforcement as the need may be. This building will give a remote relationship between us, other law enforcement, and the world. In this building, we can connect with all the Interpol countries. We can connect with all other law enforcement, real time online, without being there. So the future is here. The Comptroller General of Immigration used the platform to also tee off decoration exercise for promoted senior officers, urging them to redouble their efforts. Do not relax. We must justify this deserved promotion. The promoted officers are 29 assistant controllers general and 71 controllers. In Abuja, Victor. To electoral matters, all efforts made so far by INEC for safe conduct of elections during COVID-19 will be put to test this Saturday for the National Central State, State Constituency by-elections. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu is therefore in National State because the success or otherwise of this election will form a template for the Edo and Ondo governorship elections. To look at the preparations for the election we are holding on Saturday. This is the first election we are holding in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we thought we could come and see the preparations and I'm happy that we are joined by um, the liaison officer from the Presidential Task Force. 
Um, and he will be with us not only uh, for this election but all um, other elections. The lesson that we learn from this election will help us in Edo, Undo, and so many by elections that the Commission is going to um, conduct. We want to see how far we have gone. As far as the headquarters is concerned, everything that the Nasarawa State Office requires for the election has been provided. Mio Gidi reports that after inspecting the COVID-19 personal protective kits for staff, the INEC chairman also held talks with candidates for violence-free polls. The Labour Party says it is against the action of the Coalition of United Political Parties, COP, in its resolve to sue the federal government on the issues of continuous stay of the service chiefs. National Chairman of the party, Abdul Salam Abdul Kadri, stated this while briefing the media in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The National Chairman of the Labour Party and member of the steering committee of the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, formed during the build-up to the 2019 general elections, is frowning at the action taken by an individual to sue service chiefs in the name of the Coalition, CUPP. This decision, as well as many others taken by this individual, has not been born out of consultation among members. But a decision exclusively his. This habit therefore begs the question why he does not take his own political party rather than an organization comprising other political party entities. Political parties affected by the latest deregistration exercise by INEC, he explains, should desist from parading themselves as members of the CUPP. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And talking sports, former Super Eagles player Emmanuel Amunike happy with Osime's transfer to Napoli as Bade 